Hey, hey, I see y'all rolling in. Come on in the room. Welcome to Simplify. Welcome, welcome. We are getting started this morning. I'm happy to be here, you guys. My last couple of days have been spent on this Manifestor Daily Journal, shipping it out to you. Oh my goodness, I have pulled in the whole family to help. These journals are about to go out and I'm so excited about it. Are you excited to get your journal? I'm I'm taking several loads to UPS today. They all can't even fit in my car. My family was like, what is going on? 32 boxes of journals that got delivered. So I'm super excited about the journal. Can I get one time? One time for the journal? Can I get a purple heart in the comments for the journal? But I'm also excited about the growth in this community. And I like to tell my E-team, we have a set of values. So there's about 20 some odd people who help with Manifestor Daily. We have regional sponsors. We have E-team leads. We have all of these amazing women that I am so happy to be surrounded by. God told me he would take us higher in this community and that I wouldn't have to go by myself. Like I wouldn't have to carry this load by myself. And it truly is my pleasure to be here, right? But I did not know that God would impress upon so many other women the same feeling that he gave me in my heart to break my heart for our purpose, to break my heart for our salvation, for the upliftment of women. And all of these other women have come al alongside Manifestor Daily to ensure that it's successful. I want to say thank you to y'all. Y'all know who you are. And as a result of that, you guys, we had to put together some values. And one of our values is we celebrate one the same way we celebrate 100,000. We celebrate one the same way we celebrate 100,000 and the reverse. We celebrate 100,000 the same way we celebrate one. And the reason for that is because of the fact that in heaven, the Bible says that one is celebrated. When one comes to salvation, all of heaven celebrates. So we want to be the same way. So it's not really about the numbers, but it's about the people behind the numbers. It's about the connections that we can form as a result of the numbers. So y'all drop a one time in the comments if you're happy about that as well. So before we get started with questions, I wanted to just kind of share a word. So there's a higher level uh, in this community kind of for women who want to walk more closely, women who want to be in a tighter community, and it's called MFD Society. And in MFD Society, one of the things that we do is we do a morning miracle meditation. So the morning miracle meditation this past Saturday, it's designed kind of for women who are like, I don't know what to do in a devotion, like my mind keeps on running. And so God just impressed upon my heart, lead a, a regular devotion live. So we do this live and everyone joins in and I just lead you in a morning devotion. And typically we have a topic. And the topic this past Saturday was I am asking bigger. So it's around an affirmation. I am asking bigger. I am asking bigger. And to be honest with you, I have not been able to put this topic down. I have been carrying this topic. It has been on my heart. And this morning, before we get into the questions, which we have several questions to cover, I just have a word for those who are right now being used by God, about to be used by God. And if I can kind of take you back to just like that, our last teaching, just like that, how God suddenly works in your life. Do you remember when we talked about God's pattern? God's pattern, God has many patterns, but one of the patterns that he outlines is in Matthew 26, 26, where Jesus took the bread, he blessed the bread, he broke the bread, and then he used the bread. Y'all remember? Say yes, if you remember. You remember? So there's this place between breaking and being used. And I feel like there are some women in this community who have been broken. And you are right on the precipice. You're right on the cusp of being used. And you're like, well, Erin, that sounds good, but I really want to be blessed. Like if I could choose any part of that pattern that I want to be a part of, it would be the blessed part because who doesn't want to be blessed? 
But what I'm here to tell you is that this sweet spot between being broken and being used is everything. Being used by God is what I'm talking about. And the reason is because you can't be used unless you've been filled. You can't be used unless you've been filled. Somebody needs to write that down. So this past weekend, just to kind of illustrate this a little bit, me and my son were making chili and he loves to cook with me and he was searching for the seasonings. And I was like, you need the chili powder. We need the onion powder, the garlic powder. He's always asking me for recipes. And I'm like, baby, I can't give you a recipe. You just got to season it until it tastes good. Okay, that's how I cook. All right. So if you eat with me, I cannot give you a recipe. I'm at that age, y'all. Who else is at that age where it's just like you just know how to make stuff? So I was like, baby, you just got to season it. But we need the chili powder. And the first little um, container of chili powder was almost empty. I was like, keep searching. There's another one up there. So we had to find the one that was filled so that we could use it, right? And when we used it, it added seasoning to the pot of chili and it made it taste better. All right. So when we're looking, I just want to give us some perspective this morning. When we're looking at our past, When we're looking at the things that we've gone through, it's really about that past being seasoning because God takes all of this and he blesses it. He breaks it and then he uses it and that past becomes seasoning. You really can't be used unless you've been filled. So praise God this morning for being filled. And again, I'm talking to those who are right between that place where you've been broken and now you're ready to be used by God. God has filled you. And that's a reason to give him praise this morning because you can't be used unless you've been filled. I think back to Psalms 23 and you guys, as we do simplify, I want you to get used to getting your word out. And I will refer to some scriptures that you can write down in your journal But when I think about Psalms 23, in verse 5, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. My cup overflows. This overflowing of our cup happens because we're filled. And as I was thinking about this this morning, God was like, Not only do I fill your cup, but I want you to know that you are the cup. You are the cup. So as I feel you, there's an overflow out of your life. So you're looking at this past and you're wondering when God is going to push you forward. Baby girl, let me tell you, he already probably has. Because if you look very closely, you will see the transition. The transition looks like you being filled. The transition looks like your cup overflowing. What is it overflowing with? Because we've been looking for things external to us to define whether or not God is blessing us, whether or not he's using us. And we've been looking to jobs. We've been looking to money and bank accounts. We've been looking to things external and those things can and will happen. But where it starts is internal inside of us. So God is saying, I'm filling you up inside. And so there's an overflow of peace. There's an overflow of patience. There's an overflow of love. The things that used to make you mad just don't make you mad anymore. The triggers that used to trigger you just don't trigger you anymore. That's because there's an overflow and you are the cup that is being overflowed. So God is taking us from this place of dilution to concentration. See, before everything was kind of spread out. You said yes to opportunities that you really should have said no to. You said yes to people that you should have said no to. Let me talk about myself. I overcommitted myself when I should have said, let me think about that and get back to you and say no. I've been making my girlfriends laugh recently because this year coming up, 2023, is my year of no. You know how Shonda Rhimes wrote that book, um, Year of Yes? No, it's Aaron's Year of No. It's my year of no. It is my year of no, y'all. 2023 is already booked up. So it's not that I'm not doing anything. It's just already been calendared. I'm done. 2023 is done. There's nothing else that really can happen in 2023 that isn't already on the calendar. And already people are asking me. And God is like, nope, I need you to be concentrated. I need you not to be diluted. I need for you to go get back those things that that you gave that you weren't supposed to give out. 
it's okay to say no. It's okay to pull back. It's okay to be concentrated because when you are concentrated, I can use you. So I just wanted to encourage somebody today that it's your time and you've been asking God, you know, what do I need to do, God? What do I need to do? When is it going to be my time? It's your time. And the answer to what you need to do that I was speaking with MFD Society about this past Saturday is you need to ask. It's time for you to ask. So there's a verse, John 16, 24. And if we can just go to that really quickly, John 16, 24. And it says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. And when I read this, it really hit me in the heart. Jesus said, th these words are in red here. Jesus said, until now, you haven't even asked for anything. And I know some of us are like, wait, hold up, God. I did ask. And God is like, you didn't ask big enough. I can't even see your ask because the things that you're asking for are things that I've already provided you with. You're asking for peace, but Jesus said he left you his peace. You're asking for comfort, but he told you that he would leave you a comforter and that comforter will be called the Holy Spirit. You're asking for patience, but God said, do you remember in Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the spirit? You already have that. So why are you asking for things that you already have? You may just need to sit and realize that you have these things. And then you ask for things that you actually don't have. Jesus said, until now, you haven't asked for anything in my name. So we need to ask in his name. And he says, when you ask, you will receive and your joy will be complete. Amen. So it's time to ask. It's time to ask bigger. It's time to make this transition from being broken to being used. And it's time for us to recognize that this ask that God wants us to have, it has to be mind blowing. Like, really think about this. I challenged MFD Society to think about this question. What is your big ask? Somebody needs to write that down in your journal. What is your big ask? Your big ask of God should be something that is beyond your imagination. I want you to take whatever you've been thinking about asking God, and I need you to multiply it by five. Okay? So if you've been asking God for just this much, I need for you to ask God for this much. Because we honor God when we ask God, because that means that we believe that he can do it. Just like a small child asks their parents for things that, it, you know, if you overheard the conversation, you might be like, what, that child, do they know who their parents are? Their parents can't do that. It is an honor to God when we ask big things of God. And before I leave this topic, I just wanted to talk about something else. First Chronicles 4 and 10, because we've all heard this prayer of Jabez. So to give you an example of someone who asked really big, First Chronicles 4 and 10. So you guys are familiar with the prayer of Jabez, right? So the prayer of Jabez is found in First Chronicles 4 and 10. It says, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And then it says, you guys, and God granted his request. So I think we get excited when we read the prayer of Jabez and we, we get excited because, oh, yes, God, bless me, enlarge my territory. That's the, I think if I hear anybody talk or preach about the prayer of Jabez, that's the part that I've heard concentrated on. God, enlarge my territory, enlarge my territory. That's what we say all the time, right? But as I was studying this word, God said, go ahead and look up this verse in your concordance, like do a little study, a little research on this verse. And you guys know what I discovered? Jabez's name means pain. His name means pain. So when he prayed this prayer, he said, God, bless me, enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me, keep me from harm. And then he says, so that I will be free from pain. If there was any part of this prayer that I could get excited about, that we should get excited about, 
it's this last part where he asked to be free from pain. Because something must have happened when he was born for him to be named pain. So imagine Jabez going throughout his entire life being called pain. His entire life, people are relating to him as though he's painful. His entire life, whenever he has to write down his name, he's writing pain. His entire life, he's identified with something that has been negative. And I believe what God is telling us this morning is that we may have identified our entire lives with something that our parents said or that our neighbor said or our friends said or that kids at school said when we were growing up that other women have said in our lives. But God is saying, I can free you from that. Whatever that thing is that you've called yourself your entire life, that lie from the enemy that you've called yourself your entire life, for me, I can say it was shame. It was shame because I was really broken after my divorce and I didn't feel like God really could forgive me because Divorce was not his best. And I had been taught. I was raised in a Pentecostal church. I don't know who remembers Church of God by faith, Church of God in Christ. That's how I was raised on in those churches where you have like two rows of pews and there's like one middle aisle. Those were the churches that I was raised in. And the one thing that I remembered hearing my entire life was divorce is not of God. Divorce is not of God. So I didn't feel like God could forgive me. And I walked around with such a heavy burden of shame in my life that it was so difficult. And this entire season of my life got defined by shame. I want you to think about the seasons of your life and maybe even something that you maybe have defined your entire life by. An adjective, a word, a phrase, a way of being, a way of thinking. And if it is not God's best, what I'm here to tell you this morning is that this prayer of Jabez can be our prayer as well. Yes, God, bless us. Yes, God, enlarge our territory. Yes, God, help keep us from harm. But most of all, God, free us from the thing that we've called ourselves, that has been limiting us, that has kept us from your truth, that has kept us from your word, that has kept us from being able to live a fulfilled, abundant life in you. Keep us from that, God. Heal us from that. And God says when we pray that prayer, that he will grant our request. Amen. He will grant our request. So I want you to kind of think about this. And in the comments, if you feel comfortable, even if you're watching this as a replay, I want you to drop in the comments what it is that God can set you free from. That maybe other people defined you by or that you defined yourself by. Because Jabez was able to hear God grant his request. And for those of you who are in this space of being used, about to be used, or you're being used by God right now in his pattern, there's so much more that he has for you. So I want to leave you with this word that I share with MFD Society on Saturday. Jesus said that what you ask is possible. He said that you should open your mouth wide. And that is found in Psalms 81.10, where it says, For it was I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it with good things. I want you to think about your big ask. God said that you should open your mouth wide and that when you do open your mouth wide, that he's going to fill it with good things. God will grant the requests of those who ask. So if you have an ask that's big enough for God to be able to be honored by, he takes the joy out of us being dependent on him. It's our expression of faith to ask God for big things. If you're ready for that, for that transition, now is the time to ask. Now is the time to ask, okay? All right, you guys. So let's get into these here questions, okay? We had several questions and I'm going to ask the E-team to go ahead and drop the question link in the chat, in the comments, so that you have the way to submit the questions. They are anonymous. Um, People have emailed me questions, but you can also use this link to submit the questions. So the first question is, let's see. 
Someone asked from the community, how do you not give up on a relationship God confirmed was your spouse? How do you not give up on a relationship God confirmed was your spouse? So I think that there's probably two ways that I could answer this. I could answer it from the perspective of being married or not being married to this person yet. And if I had to guess, I'm thinking that this person is asking from the perspective of not being married yet. So how do you not give up on a relationship that God confirmed was your spouse? If you're not married yet and God confirmed to you that someone was your spouse, but you're in a position where you're having to ask yourself, how do I not give up on this? I would just challenge you to go back to God and just ask for confirmation of that word. Because when God gives a word about something like marriage, he gives it to both people. So it's not just you that he gives that word to. He also gives it to the other person because you all are going to be bound in relationship. The Bible says two will become one. So my thought is that if you are having to struggle to stay in a relationship because God confirmed to you that that was your spouse, you might need to revisit that thing. You might need to ensure that the other person also received confirmation. And if that person received confirmation as well, this is an opportunity for both of you to go to God and ask God how to proceed. And you can do that through prayer. You can do that through counseling. You can do that through premarital counseling or therapy, right? But my my larger thought about this is that God is God. God is God. God knows the desires of our hearts. So we talked about just now putting your ask in front of God. When you put your ask in front of God, do you not know that that's all you have to do? God didn't say ask and then go do the work to make it happen. He didn't say that. When we look at the prayer of Jabez, all Jabez did was ask. And then it says, and God granted his request, right? When we look earlier at the scripture that I read, I believe it was in um, John 16, 24, he says, Jesus says, ask and you will receive. It doesn't say ask and go do the work to make it happen because I have you doing all of this and you've got to, you know, ensure that you move the mountain. God didn't say you had to do anything but ask. So if you've asked, then you can just put yourself in a position to receive because my thought is God is God. God is God. Somebody needs to say that God is God. So God being God means that you are able and and completely have the ability, the empowerment to be able to allow God to do a good work in your life. The Bible says that God will complete a good work in you. And that is in Philippians 1 and 6. So if we go to Philippians, you guys, that's toward the back of your Bible. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So you don't have to worry about it. And I think this goes for anyone who's worried about anything, whether you're going to have your spouse, whether you're going to have the job, whether you're going to have the healing, whether God is going to step in and save that child, whether you're going to get anything that you've asked for from God. Once you ask, your position, your posture is one of rest. Your posture is one of believing that God will now complete the good work. God will grant my request. God will bring it to pass. God will cause it to happen. He will do that because he promised that he would complete a good work, right? So if he's completing this good work in us, then we know that he will supply all of our needs. And I'm giving y'all a lot of scriptures this morning, but I want us to be Bible scholars. That's why we're here, right? To learn how to keep Christ in the center, because that's the best way to show up daily. So God will supply our needs. So if we look at Philippians 4 and 19, it says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So I don't have to worry about the relationship. If God confirmed that this is a relationship that is supposed to be for me, he will confirm it with me and he will confirm it with the other person. And my only task is to relax, to sit back 
and to receive. I have to do the work that God puts in front of me. But one of those those and, and that can include a lot of things, right? That can include me getting my own healing. That can include me spending time with God. That can include me enriching my life by fulfilling my purpose, getting started on my purpose and fulfilling my purpose. But one thing that it does not include is being anxious or being worried. The Bible says, do not be anxious for anything. Like literally, don't be anxious for anything. So if God is completing the good work and God is supplying my needs and I don't have to be anxious, then I can allow this relationship to be exactly what it is that God said. And that relationship will either get into alignment with the word of God or it will elevate out of my life. It either will elevate up or it will elevate out. That's what we always say in this community. We elevate up or we elevate out. So if God is doing all of this for us, then we really don't have to worry, right? So I think my folks here on Instagram, we're going to try to get you guys back on. Let's see if we can get reconnected. Are you guys reconnected on Instagram? If you can't hear me, you might want to go ahead and join on Facebook. I'm going to restart this live. You guys on Instagram, our Facebook folks, y'all good. Y'all are y'all are good. Y'all don't have anything to worry about. I'm going to go ahead and restart over here so that hopefully we can get the sound and you guys can hear. All right. Are you guys good? All right. I see y'all elevate up or elevate out. So I restarted on Instagram. We'll see if they can get back on. But that's my answer. Y'all, I, I, I'm just at this place in my walk with God and I'm encouraging all of my masterclass students, all of our community, everyone who comes in contact with this ministry, with this community, you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be worried because it's this or better, this or better. Somebody drop that hashtag. It's this or better. So if that person leaves, well, it's it was that that person, him or better. So if he left, that means better is coming. If that job ends, it's this or better. So if that's over, then that m- must mean better is coming. I don't have to be concerned. It's this or better, right? All right, I see y'all on Instagram. We got our whole community back up and running, y'all. So that's my answer there. Now, the second question that came in... <clears throat> is how do you hear God's voice? How do you hear God's voice? So I think a lot of people ask this question, right? How do you hear God's voice? Let me just answer it straight up. So first of all, we hear God's voice through his word, right? We hear God's voice through people that he puts in our life that brings a word of knowledge to us. We hear God's voice. Some of us hear God's voice in an audible fashion. Like we can actually hear God speaking. All right. But I don't really know if that's the question that this person is really asking, because, of course, we we know that we can read the word and we can go hear someone preach or, or share a teaching and we can hear God's voice through those means and methods. What I think this person is really asking is how do I recognize God's voice? Because I would submit to you that we've all heard God's voice. I believe everyone has heard God's voice. I just don't believe everyone has recognized that they heard God's voice. You guys see the difference? We've all heard it, but we might not have recognized that we heard it. And the reason why we don't recognize that we hear it is because we're not familiar enough with hearing God's voice to know that we heard it. So I I always used to tell this story when people ask this question about how do I hear God's voice? It's kind of like a clanging bell in a church. You've seen those big bells that you kind of have to clang, that old fashioned bell that you use a rope to clang. If I'm standing right under that bell, I'm going to hear that clanging really loud. In fact, I'm probably going to hear it so loud, I won't be able to hear anything else. But if I step outside of that church, It's still going to be loud, but not as loud as before, right? Does that make sense? When I step even 
further away, maybe 500 feet away, I can still hear the bell, but I probably can have a conversation with other people. I can probably do other things because I can hear it, but it's not drowning out everything else in my life. And then if I could take that just one step further, I could probably get so far away from that bell that I don't hear anything at all. And that's how hearing God's voice works. So how do you hear God's voice? You spend time with God. When you spend time with God, you get used to hearing the way that God speaks. Do I have anyone who can testify to that? You get used to hearing the voice of God different from your own voice, different from the voice of the enemy. Because the enemy likes to speak to you as well. And the enemy likes to share lies The enemy likes to throw fiery darts and you know it's the enemy because it causes you to feel horrible. It's a lie. It doesn't result in peace or joy or any of the fruit of the spirit that God promised us. But we know it's God because his word always confirms it. So when you hear God's voice because you spent time with him and you've gotten used to hearing it, And you realize that the closer you get to God, the louder his voice is going to be. Just like the closer you get to that bell, the louder it's going to be. And you realize also that there are some seasons in your life where you need to be standing right under that bell. How many have ever had a season like that where I don't need to hear anything else but God right now? Like, I can't deal even with my own thoughts right now. I'm going through a season of anxiety or I'm going through a season of depression or I feel the fact that the enemy is is really shooting fiery darts at me. That's a sign that you need to go get up under that bell. You need to get under this space where all you hear is God's word. You need to literally drown out every other voice that's around you in your environment until God's voice becomes so loud that that's all you can hear. So that's the answer for you if you're experiencing an overwhelming feeling of anything that is negative. And we're just going to pray over that right now in the name of Jesus. We bind a spirit of anxiety. We bind a spirit of depression. We bind a spirit that causes a lack in all the things that God has given us that is good. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We bind it and we cast it out. And we thank God and we we praise God for stepping in with all of the blessings that we need that are opposite of anxiety and depression and fear. We thank God for love. We thank God for peace. We thank God for protection in the name of Jesus. We thank God for patience. We thank God for long suffering. We thank God for kindness. Lord, we just thank you for that in the name of Jesus. I want to get to a a place where even when I'm not sitting in front of someone teaching or I'm not sitting inside of a church or I'm not listening to gospel music, that his word is ringing in my ears, that I'm able to hear his voice in such a way that it's no separation between me and God, that it's one and of, of the same. And this is what the psalmist said in Psalms one nineteen eleven. Let's go to it, you guys. Psalms 119.11. This is what the psalmist says. He says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I want to hide his word. I want to hide his word. I want his word to be so deep inside of my heart that you can't tell the difference between me and the word of God. I want that merging to be so significant that there's no separation. There's no separation because when you get to that point, like we've been studying Psalms 23 and you're walking through a valley, you don't have to fear any evil because God is with you. God is with you. You've hidden his word in your heart. So as soon as that fiery dart comes, you have the sword of the spirit. You have a shield of faith. That fiery dart hits that word of God. That sword of the spirit, the Bible says, is the word of God. That fiery dart hits that sword of the spirit and it is defeated in the name of Jesus. God said we are more than conquerors. 
So that's how you hear God's voice. You spend time with him until you recognize his voice because God has been speaking to you this entire time. Amen. I'm going to answer one more question, even though I have five this morning to answer. I'm going to answer one more question. It is submitted from an anonymous community member, and it says, how do you trust other women when you've never had a healthy relationship? I grew up with hateful and unforgiving sisters. Then I was hurt by so-called friends. So now I fear new friendships and sisterhood. The betrayal and deceit hurts too much to keep chancing it. I have to say this particular question really hits me in my heart because I can relate to this. I grew up in in, uh, in an environment where I was the only black child in a school of white children. I was ostracized. I was left out from as early as I can remember all the way up through middle school. So I didn't have any friends. And I didn't believe that I could have friendships with women. So I understand when you've been raised in a situation or you've experienced a life circumstance where you've been hurt by other women, whether it was when you were a girl, whether it was when you were a young adult, or whether it's been recently as, you know, an adult. And it does hurt really bad. It feels like betrayal. It feels like deceit. But what I will tell you is that hurt people hurt people and healed people heal people. Hurt people hurt people, healed people heal people. And so if you've been hurt by hurt people, it's a sign, it's a signal for you to step out and to be in a space where you're around healed women, where you're around healed people. And you have to allow yourself to do that in a manner that is safe to you. So you create boundaries and you go slow and you watch and you observe. This is important, you guys, because I really believe that the enemy tries to defeat us in one key way, in many ways, right? But one key way specifically for women is by causing us to be separated, So he tries to create division because God stands for unity. God loves unity and the enemy tries to come to pervert all that is good. That is God. So instead of unity, the enemy wants to bring division. So he wants to divide you from that, which is your divine inheritance. He wants to divide you from that, which is your divine right. And we know it's your divine right because many times throughout the Bible, God tells us you were meant to be in community. One of those ways is Hebrews 10 and 25. It says, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So God tells us, he says, you know, you are the vine. I am the vine. You are the branches. We, we are all connected. We're supposed to be in community. So the enemy wants to separate us from that which belongs to us. And I'm here to take back everything that the enemy was trying to steal and that he stole. The Bible says that we have every right to do that. So if you were meant to be in community, and I believe this person, you know that you were because you still have a longing, you still have a desire to, to try And you wouldn't, you wouldn't have asked this question if you didn't, right? But you are worried, you're fearful. I think you have to intentionally place yourself in a healed group of women or a healed relationship. And you can always tell when somebody's healed because they have a peace. They have an ease. They have the right words to say. They don't react, They respond, right? You guys remember that when I taught about feminine energy a long time ago, a woman responds, a girl reacts. Yeah, so I don't have to rush to have an answer. I don't have to rush to be able to to say anything when I am trying to figure out, did you really mean to offend me or were you just having a bad day or, you know, what's going on? I can respond, So, you know, try to place yourself in a community. That's what I did. I created a community because God told me to of just a small group of women. And we learned how to fall in love with God over and over and over again. 
through spending time with God. We learn how to read his word. We learn how to share vulnerably and authentically with each other and it grows. So take it step by step and take it slow. And I believe that this is a community where you can find that because that's one of the reasons why God told us to come together in this community. So I would encourage you to reach out to me, whoever submitted this question. And I want to, you know, have a conversation with you and help you get connected to some women who are healed, who I know are healed because they've done the work. Who's done the work? Who's done the work? I, all my masterclass students, I know you've done the work. Y'all, MM in the chat, MM in the comments. If you've done the work, heal people, heal people. That's it. So you guys, we are at time. I'm going to go ahead and close here. I want to remind you, I love these questions that are being asked. I'm going to go ahead and save the next two for our next time that we meet, which is going to be on the 20th. So it'll be here, same time, same place. And remember in January, we will be starting with our daily, uh, our weekly curriculum, rather, in our Manifestor Daily Journal. I'm so excited about this journal. So you simplify in the comments to share your thoughts. And I'm going to go ahead and just close us out with an affirmation from our journal. And um, this is right in the beginning. So there's, there's affirmations and all kinds of things throughout this journal. And so this one, I think, goes along well with what we've talked about today because it's focused on I am loved and in a beautiful relationship. And we've been talking a lot about relationships, not only with God, but with other women and with, a, you know, potential spouse. It's so interesting that all of those kind of are themed together. So y'all know we're going to have some good conversations in January, right? We're going to have a good time in January because clearly relationships and how to manage them are a priority for us. So I'm just going to close us out with this affirmation. I am worthy. I am chosen. I am allowed in. I am free to be myself. I am fully acknowledged. I enjoy healthy relationships with others. I surround myself with people who love God. Y'all, weren't we just talking about that? I surround myself with people who think loving thoughts, love overflows, love pours into my open hands. I have love. I am known. I receive freely. God and his confirmation. I attract people who think on positive things the way I do. Amen. So rich, you guys. So I will see you again for our next episode of Simplify live on Instagram, also in our Manifesto Daily Facebook group. If you have not joined, go ahead and do so so that you can get connected to our regional groups. I'm going to ask Kayla to drop our regional groups link in the chat, in the comments as well. You've got to get connected. You've got to walk closer with women who are going in the same direction as you are. And that's what this community is all about. We keep Christ in the center because that's the best way to show up daily. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.